Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sandy Bay map. Just got this amazing view in front of us here so I thought I'd just stop and take it in. So good. And we've got the train down there as well. But anyway today what we're going to be doing is a lot more grass work. As you'll probably remember from the previous episode we have been doing quite a bit of grass work recently and we are going to be doing that for certainly the foreseeable future. If you haven't seen the previous episode please do go and watch it because we're using the Crone Big M in that episode, a uh, fantastic mod. But today we've got to do some tedding and we also have to do some raking. And that is for hay bales and for silage bales. Those bales in there also need to be moved, but that will be in a few episodes time, probably next week. Now one good thing about the Crone Big M is it allows you to put the grass already into rows so that when we're doing silage bales we don't actually have to row it up. It means we can just go straight in there with a the baler and get them all baled. Um, the, the rake and the tedder are for the hay bales today. That is for the, the field which is going to be hay. And that is the field which is just down the road from here, field number six. But what we're doing at the moment is just taking this tractor to the shop because we're actually going to sell it. Because so many people have said I use New Holland way too much. So we are going to get rid of it and we're going to get a JCB. Because JCB tractors are also amazing. So I'm going to go for a JCB. Uh, a few of you probably were hoping I was going to say case then. Got some more case coming into the Court Farms videos hopefully very soon. Um, so that is why I've not gone with the case but JCB very good tractors and I think they'll be quite good at pulling or powering the tether and the rake so that's why I've gone with them now the reason why the trailer is on is because this is from the very first episode when we were doing harvesting and I've just picked this up from the seafront which is where we left it uh, I don't usually like dumping stuff I actually forgot I dumped it it was all to do with the power because I had at the time uh, that is the reason why it was still there but let's just go and take this over to the sell point and we we should get some uh, more money for it if we put it over here I will just drop the trailer off though and as it's a T7 it's worth quite a bit wow yeah that is that is quite a lot but will we be able to afford other things once we have bought a JCB? Hard to tell, let's just have a look. Uh, we can't actually afford the biggest one at all, and the smallest one we can afford, but we really won't be able to afford much more. So we'll go for the smallest one. I quite like the small one anyway. And that leaves us with £33,000. We'll just double check and see what machinery we own. I don't think we have a tether or a rake, so no we don't, so we'll have to buy one of those. We want the tether first and the smallest one is £10,300. I think the smallest one will be okay for this map, we might get two in the end, but certainly to begin with the smallest one is great. Um, and the windrower, we have 22000 left, uh, yeah we should be okay with the smallest one, so we'll go for that. And let's just head back up to the yard, drop the trailer off, and we'll come back and uh, pick up the tether. I use these tractors quite a lot in the Cobra Park farm videos, and I haven't really used them too much since. And I'm at that stage now where I'm missing them. I really do want to use these tractors. They're good tractors. I've always liked fast tracks. So, I think this is a good map also to have a JCB in. But yeah, we'll just uh, whiz up to the farm. Shouldn't take too long in this tractor. And we'll drop the trailer off, come back for those two implements. Good timing for the light usually have to sit here for ages and not too far to go now 
So here we are. We'll just reverse it into here. Shouldn't stick out too far. And back to the shop to pick up the tether. We use the manual attach, don't use it often enough, and we have got a PTO on here, so it's always good. Well there's a train, intercity. So let's go up to field number 6 and we will get that all turned over and drying. Of course it is going dark now so it's not going to dry too much, so we'll probably actually row it up in the next episode. For this episode we will just do our silage bales and uh, they'll be all wrapped um, and that will probably bring us to the end but we've got lots of work ahead of us and I need to remember where field number six is. It's the next track thankfully because I've just gone past the other one. We'll keep going and uh, we'll turn right up this narrow track. just before the traffic lights but the lights are red so I'm not sure I'm guessing we can turn so that is one entrance on the right just back there there's a track which goes to the other side of this hedge uh, that is the way we went in the last time but as we saw there is another gate somewhere up here we use a different entrance today. And yeah, there it is. The only thing with this entrance is the gates are probably going to be blocking the way a bit, so we'll have to shut them behind us. And let's begin, we'll reverse back to the corner, make it a little bit easier. It's not the biggest tether, in fact it's the smallest in the game, but we really couldn't afford the other one without renting it, and I don't want to be doing too much renting. love the texture for the grass which is being turned over. I'm not sure actually if that is original. The amount of fields I must have done and I can't remember if that is the original texture. Somehow it looks different. It might be the lighting. Possibly. Still a good texture though. So this will take probably a, a couple of days to actually dry out properly. So we will give it a bit of time to do that, leave it to be a bit more realistic instead of just coming straight in with the windrower. Um, and then we'll row it all up and bale it. Quite a slow job, but still not a bad job. Quite enjoy doing this. thinking about it we probably wouldn't even want the bigger tether because it's quite tight this field is quite tight and so are the others so I think we probably would want both eventually 
because there are some bigger fields which are more, more open and you would want to be using the bigger equipment. But certainly this field, with the telegraph poles and everything, you wouldn't really want a bigger one. This is the most suitable one for the field. That's lap one. <laughs> Let's go for lap two. This tractor should be big enough for the baler, the big crone baler, which was in the mod contest and did very well. Um, I think it will be. We'll give it a go, and if it, obviously if it's lacking power, we'll just swap it over to the Massey Ferguson. But as it's been a long time since I've used the JCBs, I would quite like to use that all episode today. Now we're getting to the trickier part, which is going around here. Still don't know the proper way of doing it. I can only imagine that you do actually just drive around in a circle with it going, but I'm not entirely sure. It works, but I'm not sure if it's the proper thing to do, the realistic way of doing it. Maybe you have to pick it up and then reverse up to it, I'm not sure. If it's your job, please do let me know, then I can do it properly in future. I can never get tired of the detail in here though. Just look at that, it's incredible. this bit here to contend with. There we go. That's pretty good. It is a fairly awkward sized field or shaped field. But that's what I like. I always like these unique fields which are just not perfectly square because that is so boring when they're perfectly square. This is the best type of field you could have. Maybe not for practical reasons, but just for interest, really. It adds a lot of interest to the map. In fact, I can imagine in real life it is a bit of a pain when you have a field like this. But then, yeah, they did. They pulled out all the, the ditches and the hedgerows, didn't they? Um, when farming was becoming more intensive. So I can understand it from a practical side of things. And the final bit in the centre, the small triangle we always get left with. There we go, field done. So let's switch it off, let's fold it up. So that is it for this field today. We will be returning tomorrow. Uh, I'm now going to do two Sunday bait maps side by side, so two a week. 
uh, one after another and that will be hopefully for a long time this is probably my joint third favorite map I'm not sure hard to say a favorite because there's so many good maps but it's certainly up there up at the top as one of my favorites this just needs to go back to the yard we'll drop it off and then we will attach to the crone baler make sure we've got enough wrap in there and netting and stuff and then we will head to the big grass field in front of our main yard and hopefully if this tractor has got enough power which I think it has then we'll hopefully get it all bailed up and wrapped that is one really good thing about that baler it does it all in one go I can't see what colour the lights are on. I think they might be on red. So, um, I don't know. We, it's hard It's hard to actually pull out of there. Let's just have a look if it's on green. Oh, it's on red, so we actually did go through green lights then. Now, I don't want to keep bringing all the machinery to the same place every time, so we're going to have to find some designated areas for these things. Aha, here we go. We've got a shed up here. There is the bale cell point, so we'll just put it this side of it. We don't want to block it in. It should be good just there. Now let's drive over to the crone baler. We'll open up the sides, like I said before, and we will just make sure there is, there is enough in there, because we ran out last time because I forgot to check. Always best to check before you start a field, as I found out. And I think there will be. We didn't really do much with it since filling it up. Yeah, I think the PTO connects automatically on this. Oh yeah, and also <laughs> thank you to everyone who pointed out last time. Um, the bail counter, which I totally looked over. I don't know why I didn't look at it, but yeah, you, you are totally right. At the bottom right hand corner, there is the bail counter. Um, staring me right in the face, but I just decided not to look down there for some reason. So thank you to everyone who did tell me about that. It's very helpful. Okay. So let's just have a quick look. Pretty sure we're okay though, that's why I've come straight to the field. We're good there. Oh, not so many in there, but there should be enough for the field. Yeah, there's four. There's four. Not amazingly full, but yeah, I'm hoping it's going to last. We might, we might put a bit more in there. Um, tell you what, we will start, and if we do run out, we'll fill it up. But as there are four in there, that, that should last a little while. It's not a huge field. Now, I will reset the bail counter by pressing Z. It still to tells us our overall bail count, but it's reset it for this session. So let's make our way up here. We also need to make sure that the wrap mode is on. I think you do that once you've turned the baler on. I'm just hoping the bales aren't going to roll away. I'm not sure exactly with this baler, but I know that when you wrap them with the, the, the independent bale wrapper, it actually flips the bale over so it doesn't roll away. I'm not sure if it does it with this, but we'll switch it on. The bale size can be much larger probably 1.5 wrap bells is off, we'll run that on and drop mode is auto, so that should be good let's begin it's 
so it is wrapping the first bale it just threw out it was not having it and the reason for that is because it was actually straw from the last time so it's actually quite clever to have realized that that was the wrong material inside there so we just thought i'm not having it let's get rid of it and he threw it out the back oh yes um i must be careful with my bailing i am not the best baler driver in the world as you'll have probably gathered from my previous video i find the the, the road is quite wide though i don't know if it's just me but i do miss quite a bit it's probably just me it probably is But as we're now on the largest setting for the bale size, we should be able to get fewer bales and much larger bales in one go. This is flat out. We are going at full speed here. So yeah, we probably could do with a bit more horsepower. It does take the power out of the tractor. It turns out the bales do just still come out as they would do from a normal baler because uh, that one is escaping. Stop that bale! <laughs> it's off! Thankfully though, this map does have a number of collisions around the field so the, the hedge or the wall or something will stop it. Then we just have to fetch them all out of the, uh, the boundary where they all roll to. I think I'll go in cab and see if I can do it any neater because you can see I'm always missing bits. I don't like missing bits because it looks really scruffy. Seems to be feeding up. It is easier for Mincap, but as soon as you look behind you lose track of where you are. The reason why it's uh, so bad at the bottom here is because that's where I changed the mode, the cut mode for the big M and it deposited it evenly rather than putting it into one row in the middle. There we go, look. The stone wall has caught a bale. Now we can just use the bale grab or something and get it out of there. That is one real bonus with the maps with collisions around the fields because although they do have negative points, like you get stuck on them in multiplayer, they do also catch bales. So there are good points and bad points against collisions. Ah, uh, just about, we didn't get to the top. Now this one's going to roll away as well. There it goes, just rolling out the back. Yeah, I don't know if there's a mod for it, but like, if you could have a mod which made the bales sticky and they stuck to the ground and didn't just roll away, that would be really good. But then having said that, I guess in real life they would also roll away if you put them on a, a steep slope. So, I don't know, you can't really win there. Maybe if they just had it so they're a bit more resistant to rolling. It could be a mod, I guess. I haven't seen a mod, but there's so many mods out there. It could easily be one. Hey, oh, it's the uh, bale gathering. At least it makes it easier for you load, loading the bales up because they'll all be together.
Right, well, we're almost on the final row. Just climbing the hill once more. This tractor, as it turns out, is not powerful enough for the baler on a, on a gradient, but on a flat field, it would have no trouble at all. So I'll know that for the future. As it turns out, for this particular field, we probably should have kept it on the Massey Ferguson, but you live and learn. Right, so that is that row pretty much done, just gathering the final few bits there. There are lots of bits here and there. Uh, I don't know if the, the, the swath size is bigger or not, I'm not sure. Because you can change it in Giant's Editor, I think. So, I don't know. as well stay down here. All the other bales have come down here. In fact the only bale which has stayed up there is the straw bale, interestingly. I don't know why that is. I guess it's just not on a steeper slope. But that is us done. We have 80% left in the baler and I don't think you can empty the baler. You can press O on the square baler but this one doesn't do anything. So it will just have to stay in there and I'm assuming next time we use it, it will just sort of throw it out as they did before. And someone did mention that you can remove the fold mat or you can fold it up. Wow, you can. Thank you to the person that said that. So yeah, let's go back up to the, the top. We'll drop the baler off and we'll call it a day. I think it's been quite a good day. We've got the tedding done and we've also got the baling done in this field at least and tomorrow we'll have to row it up and we'll be able to bale it straight away so the other field will be completed by the end of the next episode which will mean we will have three fields which need to have their bales cleared so we might end up getting an auto stacker we'll see there are quite a lot of bales now though and from this field we produced I don't know if it's including the straw one but we produced 14 bales not bad. So we will just park this next to the big M because we're going to need it very soon. And there we go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this episode, and if you did, Please do join me again next time for more on the Sandy Bay map. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.